Will silver never break $20 an ounce? Hey everybody, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. Wait a minute. Is that true? Was was $50 an ounce back in 2011 just a tease? Maybe there's, I don't know, some massive resistance at that level. 20 bucks an ounce. Maybe JP Morgan has this all under control and will not let it get to that point. Will all this right here uh, never break $20 an ounce again? Wait, maybe this decade of the 20s. It's just too much for even silver to enjoy. <laughs> no, I don't think we silver stackers are delusional when we see silver at this current price as still severely undervalued. In this video, I'm going to talk about what has transpired over the last week. It's been pretty amazing. And while I do that, I thought I'd break out some of my foreign silver and, and just show you as I talk. So um, around the foreign silver are my American Silver Eagle one ounces. These aren't one ounce necessarily, but these are still destined to go up in value, at least in my opinion. If you've been watching silver spot prices like I have, uh, you've seen them explode, haven't you? I mean, it traded above $19 an ounce last week. Last Thursday, silver hit a multi-month high with September 2020 COMEX silver reaching above $19.40 an ounce overnight. The second quarter of 2020, well, not so hot in many ways, has been hot for silver, to say the least. The white metal outperformed gold. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it outperformed gold by a factor of two as it jumped some 33% over the previous three months. That's incredible, guys. And I think it's popped for several reasons. Uh, let me just go through them right now with you as we look at this beautiful Balboa. <laughs> Um, first of all, silver seems to have gotten some uh, traction as a uh, safe haven asset. Think about it. Many people expect further insane fiscal and monetary action from our government and Fed, right? Geopolitical tensions are rising too. Yeah, it's causing a uh, saber rattling to occur. Case in point, China has uh, implemented... Uh, some uh, security laws against uh, Hong Kong. And more and more uh, Western countries are kind of, you know, reviewing their relationship with Hong Kong. And therefore, we are getting closer and closer to a confrontation with China. And if that wasn't enough, the U.S. is thinking about imposing new sanctions on China. Hmm, that's great. That'll help us economically. It's also questioning the Hong Kong dollar peg to the U.S. dollar. We are actually considering excluding banks in Hong Kong from our SWIFT payment system. I mean, that uh, it's just more wielding of our dollar as a weapon. And we just don't know what is going on with this medical crisis. And, and whatever you think about wearing masks or whatever, people are scared, folks. Wow. This month is really critical. And I was talking to my neighbor outside just today, and uh, he was telling me about his uh, wife needing the PPP, or else her um, school wouldn't be able to operate. She wouldn't be able to pay her employees. In fact, she's hoping for another round of PPP or whatever they call it because it's going to get really nasty. And he, the husband, was telling me outside that uh, his company is losing billions of dollars every quarter. Billions. He thinks layoffs are coming. I, I think he's right. So, you know... The mythical V-shaped recovery, guys, it just isn't materializing. And I just think that all builds uh, silver's safe 
haven appeal, just like gold. But we have seen a slight bump in industry. It's not totally unsurprising. And that has translated into a slight increase in industrial demand. Remember, silver is primarily seen as an industrial metal, not a monetary metal. Although it should be. <laughs> Just like these coins, right? <laughs> We'd love to see, oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, what have I looked at? Oh, what's this? Oh, yes. One franc, 1920. Mmm, pretty. Okay, anyway, <laughs> silver and gold are enjoying uh, a rise, and I do think it's also related to a, an increase in um, uh, buying uh, from ETF investors. Do you know that almost half of the gold that has been produced this year has flown right into ETFs? And silver's inflows are also way, way up. So again, with all this bullishness, it's really not surprising to me to hear analysts call for silver to breach $20 an ounce this year. Ooh, what's this one? Oh, what's this another? Yeah, this is another pretty cool. I love these Balboas. Oh, ooh, but this is nice too. <laughs> Okay, uh, anyway, question for you. Ooh, this was from Lev Chris. Oh, I remember that. What a guy. Thank you, Lev. Um, okay, so, so how is it different from what I believe the commenter was referring to, and that was April 2011, when silver peaked at $48.70, almost $50, and actually... In today's dollars, that translates into $55 an ounce. What makes us silver speculators think we're going to see this shoot up? Well, remember, that last peak was a full three years after the global financial crisis and the, the collapse of 08. We are still in the midst of the 2020 crash. That's what I think. <laughs> You know, don't let the equity markets fool you, guys. We're still in the midst of it. In fact, I think we are early in the crisis. Here's another thing. As I ooh, select another coin, I think I showed this bell bow. Oh, oh, yes. Love the reverse on this Canadian dollar. It's a 1966. They're both 1966s. Love the Aurora Borealis above the canoeists. Pretty, pretty dollars there. But anyways, here's another thing to think about. Uh, and, and, and I've mentioned this uh, several times in videos, last year included. And this is a little rant, so bear with me here. But in the early days of the Great Recession, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke assured Congress that the Fed was not monetizing debt. He claimed that the U.S. Treasuries would only remain on the Fed's balance sheet temporarily. He assured Congress that once the crisis was over, the Fed would just sell the bonds it bought during the emergency. Yeah. People believed him. Silver and gold sold off. The bull run ended. Well, that's all fine and dandy for OA, but neither he or Janet Yellen could actually do it. They couldn't do it. They couldn't unwind the debt. It did become permanent. And now, our current Fed Chairman Jerome Powell won't dare use that line again. He knows it's permanent. No one would believe him if he did say anything to the contrary. And, you know, that's a big deal, guys. That whole you know, that whole uh, uh, expectation, that was a big reason why silver plummeted in 2011. Now, silver definitely could retrace some. I, I think it could give up some gain gains. In fact, I'll explain in just a, a few minutes why I think that might happen. But whatever it does in 2020, or the entire decade for that matter, I can assure you, that silver's rise beyond $20 an ounce will not be thwarted by some temporary ruse the Fed did back in 2008.
They won't fool us again. No way. The other reason I think Silver's Rise is different this time is because it is based on a base that is really a lot better than back in 08. You know, that rise was was just, you know, meteoric. It just shot up. There was no multi-year foundation to claim validity with. But this time, this time we have almost six years of a of a floor that looks to be around, you know, $16 an ounce on average. That is a much better launching pad than the last time we saw things take off. So how soon? How soon is it going to be before we see $20 an ounce? Well, that's anyone's guess, but I'll tell you what I think in a second. But first, just let's realize something. The price of physical silver, not the paper crap, but this stuff, okay, rounds. One troy ounce of silver, a buffalo. That is already well above $20 an ounce. Just just take a quick peek at JM Bullion and that'll that'll show you right there. Premiums are still high. And these prices are the actual price of an ounce. So that, you know, that comment that silver will never reach $20 an ounce, in a sense, it's already happened, dude. So so is the spot price of silver destined for $20 an ounce. Yeah, I believe it is. And I think it's going to go way, way beyond $20 an ounce. I mean, at the very least, an inflation rate of 2 to 3% every year is going to cause that to happen, even if the actual value of the silver doesn't increase. But nominally, yep. I do. I believe it's going to happen, and I think it might happen this year. Am I ready to grab more silver now? Mm, not quite yet. Almost, but not quite yet. I'm still expecting a pullback. Okay, and I and I do think there are three potential headwinds this year, uh, the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. I'm expecting three big things to potentially happen. That will knock silver's prices down, and I'm be, I'll be ready <laughs> with some fiat to convert into silver if and when that happens. The first thing is, I've mentioned this before, but the second economic wave. You know, people want help. It, it's about to run out, guys, at the end of July. And even though that help may be just another anvil thrown to a drowning dollar, it, it, it is something people are desperate for. The second thing is uh, uh, the second liquidity crisis. Do you remember what happened on the second and third week in March? We had a liquidity crisis. People were selling everything to get cash. They needed liquidity. They had to pay off their, you know, debts. They had to, you know, uh, you know respond to uh, uh, calls, uh, margin calls. It was it was a disaster. And silver and gold, silver more than gold, but silver got slapped. I think that could happen again in the next couple months. And finally, the third thing that I think is a potential headwind for silver is, um, oh man, I almost, almost don't even want to say this because it makes me nauseous just to think about, but a constitutional crisis. <laughs> yeah, you know, with all that's going on, you know, uh, with uh, with an election season that I think is going to surpass anything we've ever seen in our lifetimes, I think the likelihood of a real constitutional crisis is there. I, I hope and pray that we avert that disaster. But, I mean, come on, guys. It's going to get nasty, ugly, horrible. I, I just... Not looking forward to it. <laughs> so in April, I said that this fall might be the right time for me to jump back into silver. But it may take until November 2nd to know for sure. So in any case, this recent silver pop in price has been interesting, hasn't it? And $20 an ounce? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me know in the comments when you think $20 an ounce is going to be e eclipsed. And uh, until then... Thanks for watching Yankee Stacking, and I hope your day 
is a-okay.